called black custard. <laughs> um, still black. And um, there were two things that came out of that study for the Center for Coastal Studies that this um, custard material, which has to be every 10 years or so dredged from the harbor, is, is first of all, not a, not a noxious material. It's um, formed from silt and from uh, natural algae in the, in the harbor. Uh, so it's, it's not harmful, dangerous, and therefore we can think of alternatives in how to get rid of it, how to disperse it. The second thing is from this piece of work is that it, it's formed by a flocculation process between silt and natural algae. Um, when I was a working scientist, I used, I used to work with um, particle technology, um, particle science. And as soon as I saw the word flocculation, it raised um, some excitement because flocculants are usually very weakly held together. And so that they have the, there's a possibility of redispersing them. So what we're looking at doing um, is getting, um, is uh, putting together an RFP if, if the town approves, um, putting together an RFP to have some outside work done to look at whether it's possible in practice to dredge the plaque custard, to deflocculate it, which would be some sort of dispersion process. Um, you might think of a, a wearing blender of some sort so that the material could be uh, pumped over to Duck Creek and carried naturally to the, the um, marshes of Upper Duck Creek. Uh, um, if th this work would be a bunch of a bunch of laboratory work in in some laboratory or other, uh, not yet decided. And if the if that looks promising, then we come and report back to the select board and to other interested interested committees and say we would like to then take the first steps. Um, to do some actual engineering and permitting. So this could be a practical alternative to dredging. Dredging, as you know, is expensive, conventional dredging, because in particular, the material has to be dragged out to the middle of Cape Cod Bay. Uh, and the timing of the dredging is not under the control of the town. Whereas uh, the sort of process that we hope might uh, come out of the work we're proposing would be under the control of the town. So that's the, the, the basic of idea of what we, um, what we have in mind. As I said, we would, we would like to take the outline which you have seen, um, turn it into an RFP. I would love to have some advice on who might be interested in doing this work. I've got some ideas, but if any of you have any suggestions, please uh, send an email to me that that should be a private uh, correspondence. I have worked with Rebecca Slick, who's the assistant um, town manager, and she's um, can be very helpful in uh, putting together this sort of RFP. So I'd be interested in comments, questions, discussion. And you know, hopefully this is something that you could support. Yeah, I'd like to ask a question though. Um, I take it that this, if, if this works out, you'd be sucking the stuff up from like where the marina is by the pier, deflocculating it and then pushing it back upstream, up, up Duck Creek? Um, is that what you were saying? 
ba basically, yes. The, you know, so the question is how to get the material out of the harbor. For, first of all, um, I should make it clear that I wouldn't imagine for reasons of timing and um, engineering that none of this would happen until the, there had already been some dredging in the marina. We don't want to we don't want to deal with the whole pile of black mayonnaise. Um, it would be sucked up. There, there's a kind of dredging called suction dredging. That's what we would use, deflocculated. And then the way the material would get up to the, the Duck Creek marshes is by the natural flow of the tides. Mm. So that's why it's important that the, that the, the flocculated material is, is fine enough that it would be carried by the tide. I see. And I, I think that last statement is, is probably the, the, the critical issue that we'd have to solve. Mm -hmm. hmm. the, uh, hmm. Does anybody else have any questions besides me? Have you talked to Nancy Chivetta about this? Yes. Okay, so she and is she, she is she's aware of it. Um, she's comfortable with it, with the proviso that we are sure that the the material that we put into the flow of Duck Creek makes it up to the upper marshes of Duck Creek and doesn't uh, deposit itself. Uh, say between the marina pier and uh, the old railroad dike because that's that's important shell fishing area. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But apart from that, yes, she's she, I've discussed this with uh, with Nancy and with the shellfish advisory board, and they they're supportive. Good, good. Would any of this material flow out with the tide out on, into the harbor? Sure. Okay, but that's okay. But that's what that's what's happening now. It doesn't it doesn't all get end up on the marshes. It flows in and out. Right, like the marina area. <laughs> really, uh... Okay, so uh... can I ask a question, Leon? Certainly. I can't raise my hands because I'm the co-host. But um, John, how much okay. money are you asking for? Twenty-five thousand. Twenty-five thousand and. That most of that is going to go to laboratory analysis. I would guess, yeah, fifteen to twenty of that twenty-five. Because I'm thinking, in addition to laboratory analysis, um, I feel like we're going to need some modeling work done, right? Some sedimentation modeling. Yep. And a permitting process mm -hmm. um, uh, probably all really of this work that we propose that we propose is laboratory work we have um, Hillary we have to identify the permitting process but we wouldn't actually under what we're proposing here start it so I guess I'm wondering why you wouldn't do the laboratory analysis and the sediment modeling, because I can't imagine the shellfish community is gonna buy into this without that, just seeing what I've seen on Herring River. Um, modeling is one of the, is I should have mentioned it. It's, I did, I did include it in the little document I sent around, use modeling as needed. I think it would be needed. Yeah. And I, Hillary, I was, um, I heard a report, I think Kirk, Kirk Bosman was talking about the work he did with the Herring River and it was mentioned that he had already begun to think about some inner harbor modeling. So, I mean, that would be a natural person to go to. Hmm. And what what he's what he would need to do for us is exactly what he'd need to do with the Herring with he had done with the Herring River. So what do you need from us, John? Well, I'd love to have you um, support the support this um, 
project uh, as part of the town meeting process. So this is not the curly uh, ATM movement. This is just the NRAB request article XX, right? For the 25,000. Right, I'm, we're gonna talk about the curly thing. There's two things. We're gonna talk about the, the uh, curly thing next. So this is, that's more expensive, um, totally different project. Well, this is 25,000 just for, uh, as a dredging alternative. So you'd like to be able to say that the uh, Conservation Commission approves of this? Yes, please. In the warrant, right? So we need to, we'll need to vote on that. John, yes, please. Yeah, I, basically, I propose that we support this. I cannot imagine that the Conservation Commission would not want more research on the impact of activities on the coast. Um, we're supporting the research. That's what we need to be doing. I think it's very important that we support this. Okay, would anybody, that was a motion. So does anybody second Yes, I'll, I'll second, Michael. All right, so we'll have a voice vote. Barbara? Yes. Benjamin? Yes. Mike? Yes. John? Yes. And Leon, yes. So we are in support of that unanimously. Thank you. The, so the, um, the second um, article is considerably more expensive, 60,000 as, as approved by the select board for the warrant. And it um, proposes a survey of uh, water life within the, within the harbor. And by water life, I mean particularly uh, fish and shellfish. Uh, the word curly has been used. That's because there was a work done by the Division of Marine Fisheries 50 years ago, led by a man called John Curley, who did this sort of study in Wellfleet Harbor. Uh, for those of you who'd like to read it, there's a copy of it on the NRAB webpage. We're proposing uh, to renew this. Um, over the past 10 years, there have been a lot of work done to improve the quality of the water uh, within Wellfleet Harbor. Um, widespread use of Tidal V septics, control of stormwater runoff. And at the same time, um, uh, global warming is taking place so that the water temperatures in the harbor are beginning to increase. So we, we think this is a, a good time to, to take a control look at the wildlife in the harbor, particularly the fish and shellfish, because what's coming is more global warming, the Herring River restoration, and the work of the Comprehensive Wastewater Committee. So we should, if we took the work that we propose as a benchmark, 10 years from now, if we repeat the study, we should see some, some progress. Um, I'm very optimistic that we will, but this is a way of actually helping to measure the, measure the that progress. Um, there's this, there is some work already ongoing, which really is, is, would fit into this. Um, Barbara's done a lot of work on, uh, uh, turtles, uh, diamondback terrapin uh, restoration and managing. Um, Owen, um, Owen Nichols from the Center for Coastal Studies has done some work on bait fish. That was, that's work supported by the Friends of Herring River. So we, we think that we could put together a nice package of information on the quality of life inside the harbor. Not, this is not, this, not a study of water quality chemistry or 
temperature or physical um, measurements. This is this is about about life in the harbor and um, what it, what what the state of it is. Um, I imagine that uh, we would spend somewhere between a half and 60% of the, the money to do this survey over a period of two years. Again, we would report back. And then I have listed some, just off the top of my head, if you like, some possible ideas for follow-up work. Um, but before we did that, there would be a report to the select board. So in, in um, and, to this committee and to any other committee was interested. So while the town meeting warrant says 60,000, basically you're, you'd be committing to spending 30 or 40,000 and then we'd have another look at it. Does this uh, work? So does go ahead, work? yes. I'm, yeah, does this work complement or overlay what they're gonna be doing as far as monitoring as they work on the Herring River, opening it up? Uh, I mean, um, won't they be looking at uh, the effect on, on the marine life as they begin to open up the uh, marsh to more significant flow, tidal flow? I think this complements the work because this looks at the whole harbor. It's not, it's not just the gut area. Mm -hmm. Okay. But um, I'm, I would certainly, in complement to what the Herring River project is doing, look look closely at the cut area because that's there should be a, a significant change. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have a question. Okay, Ben. Are you going to be studying the embayments of Wellfleet Harbor as well, or just Wellfleet Harbor proper? Um, the embayments are what really was covered by the ongoing work. Uh, from the Center for Social Studies. So this is mostly this, the main harbor. Mm -hmm. and then, we, then we put the two, then we put the two things together for um, a, a comprehensive overlook. Okay. And how much was done before they started dredging looking for species? Um, I'll answer the I'll answer the question in in my way, and it may not may not be the answer you're looking for. As part of the dredging permitting process, um, there was a concern about um, the wildlife that would be affected by that by the dredging, and that particularly turned out to be diamondback terrapins. So that the permitting process for the dredging uh, took into account the need to compensate for any um, harm done to uh, the diamondback terrapin population. Um, I think other, you know, the effect on fish and other wildlife would have been considered, but uh, since the dredging takes place when a, a lot of the other wildlife has, has, has disappeared, um, it, it's really only, I think the diamondback terrapin, which uh, have been affected. I, I can tell you a story though, if, uh, if I may, and it, totally unscientific. Um, I, I, love to, I love to watch birds. I look for birds in the harbor. 10 or 15 years ago in the late fall in the, the North Marina Channel, that channel that runs up to Mayo Creek, we used, I used to see a lot of uh, Bonaparte skull and um, redneck loons fishing there. They, both these species of birds eat fish. I have not seen them over the past few years. So that, that ties this back into the dredging process because my interpretation of that is that the fish won't go uh, where there's such a, a, a pile of uh, black custard. So, um, the, the two projects uh, tie together a little bit. I see Barbara has a question. 
That's Barbara. I, I think the terrapins were um, considered because uh, natural heritage. It was uh, one of the conditions for the dredging project right. because they're, they're a threatened species. So if a species isn't threatened, there was no requirement to study them or do anything. Yeah. Thank you. That's a thank you. That's useful. So we don't know. We don't know what uh, scallops or clams or what the effect of the dredging was on them this year because we didn't do a baseline before. Is that right? Right. Okay. Yeah. I can't. So the idea, of the, the idea of this would be to make a a bay wide or a uh, harbor wide uh, survey. Yes. Of the main harbor, right? Yeah. So that we then have something to gauge progress or deterioration to that happen. I was asked about the I was asked about the estuaries of the of the harbor, and I, I mentioned the, the work that the Center for Coastal Studies was doing. Also on our mind is is all of the work that the the shellfish department has done. So there's a there's a pretty good understanding of where the shellfish are and and uh, how well they're doing. Yeah, and I think that ensuring that the way to visualize the data or that the data comes together from all these different activities that should be uh, negotiated so that the data can be shared easily and it's on the same same uh, page. So to speak, it'll actually be kind of fun because what you, what you really be doing is putting together the 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 chain of existence within the harbor. We, if we see where the big fish are and where the little fish are, presumably you'd you'd expect the big fish to go where the little fish are, and uh, it'll be fun to see if that actually works. Yeah. Are there any other? I take it this needs uh, you'd like us to approve of this as well. Yes, please. Are there any more questions before we? Yes, John. I was just going to propose that we endorse this for the same reason. Um, the more evidence we have as a committee to deal with our job, the better. So I suggest we back this strongly. Yeah. Okay. Second, Michael. All right, uh, Barbara. How do you vote? Yes. Benjamin. Yes. Mike. Yes. John. Yes. And Leon, yes. So you have unanimous support there. Thank you. And please, please remember my request. If you, for either of these projects, if you have in mind some organization who you would recommend to undertake the work, send me an email, private. It shouldn't be public, and we'll we'll consider that. But thank you for your attention and support. Thank you for the information. <clears throat> Okay, Hillary, do we have some jurisdictional opinions? I understand we have a couple. Yes, we have two jurisdictional opinions and I'm gonna to try to share my screen so I can pull them up. So bear with me one second. Hey, let's see here. Okay, the first jurisdictional opinion is for Allison Palmer of 70 Lookout Road, map 35, parcel seven. Um, and she would like to remove a blue spruce that's about 60 feet high. It's within 15 feet of her house. And in recent months, it's been leaking sap and pine needles are drying up and turning brown. She'd like to have the tree taken down before hurricane season starts because if it falls, it will fall on her house and probably break the roof. She would appreciate prompt attention so she can stop waiting for the crash. <laughs> um, and here is a picture. That's a big tree. <clears throat> and it is close to her house. And it is awfully close to the neighboring tree as well. Oh. Wow. Uh... Do, have you been out there, uh, I Barbara? Have, I have not been out, but Doug has. Okay, Barbara? What, what is did it, Doug is in 50 to 100 or in the 50? Where is it exactly? The marsh is behind the house. Um, I don't know exactly where it is. I can... I think it's, it's even in our jurisdiction. 
Um, I, I think it is uh, because the whole property is really on the edge of a marsh. Uh, I can show you the, the assessor's map of it if you'd like. Yeah, I was going to head there next to see Let me, if you have the assessor's maps up. Yeah, I do. Okay. Uh, share screen. Great. Uh, photos. <laughs> Is that, can you see that? Black at the moment, yep. Oh. And it's seven, which is just here. Where is it? I'm not seeing it. Uh, can you see my cursor or not? Uh, no. 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 Uh oh. The lookout is the loop. Right. Is and that? Number uh, seven. Is oh, it yeah. there? Number seven? Number yes. Seven, yeah. Okay, I see it. Yeah. Yeah. So the no. whole thing is pretty much in this in the wetland. But yeah, what's that dotted line that's on the the on edge the, of the marsh? That's, that's the wetland. Oh, so that whole big chunk of their property is a marsh? <laughs> yeah. Wow. So no matter where it is compared to the house, it's pretty close. Yes. Yeah. Hillary, what did Doug say? Because people say pine needles drop and they were all worried and it's just, it happens in the spring. The yeah, no, I think the larger concern is the tree falling onto her house. So I think she just wants to remove the tree. Um, we can ask her to replant it with three shrubs or a smaller growing cedar tree or something in its place. Yeah, um, I, I agree that it's, I, it is a I dangerous house. Go ahead, Barbara. Yeah, I don't have a problem with it. If she would plant a cedar, it doesn't even, it shouldn't actually be right there because there's another tree there, but someplace else on the property to compensate for habitat and for carbon, um, that would be great. Okay. I will report that back after a vote. Um, can I amend that to ask? She's taking down a very large tree. I'd like to see her put two cedars in. Sure. And make sure they survive. Yep, I will request two small native trees. Okay, so do I hear a motion on that? So moved, Michael. All right, second. Barbara. All right, Barbara, how do you vote? Yes. Benjamin? Yes. Mike? Yes. John? Yes. And Leon, yes. So that's a go. Okay, next up we have a jurisdictional opinion and I see Gordon's here, so I may let him present the project if he feels up to it, but I'm going to share the screen so you can see the paperwork. It's for the Courier property at 1015 Chequesneck Road, map 19, parcel 93. And I'm just gonna try to share my screen here. Okay, go ahead. Gordon, you can take it away. Uh, good afternoon. This is Gordon Peabody from Safe Harbor. Can I be, am I being heard? Yes. 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 Oh, that's a piece of good news these days on Zoom. Um, good, to be heard. good afternoon. I work with Safe Harbor Environmental. This is a fairly small project. Uh, I'm in favor of trying to keep our coastal banks uh, healthy. Uh, this is a very unusual coastal bank because everywhere on Cape Cod, people are just in a panic that the coastal banks are, uh, you know, retreating landward. But this coastal bank is unusual because it really has uh, no fetch. There's no real wave fetch. And the only transitions that we've been able to detect going back about 15 years are lateral. And that would be due to the tidal flow going into the Herring River Basin. <clears throat> and um, so a lot of the uh, area that normally you'd be uh, concerned about, but we're not that concerned about here, but there's also quite a few bare areas that are nonetheless eroding. And we believe there's an anthropogenic component here. So we wanted to start uh, making a small gesture to uh, doing some native plantings that can help to stabilize the lower area. Hmm. Okay. What uh, we're looking at the picture right here that uh, 
Can you see that? Yes. Bernie? Yes. So are we talking about what we're seeing bare sand or is it the bottom third or? We would we just be planting, we would, uh, we would just be planting the bare, uh, the lower bare sand. I see. Okay. And what do you have? It, it's a, if, if it's, it's a combination of um, uh, goldenrod and uh, uh, Virginia, uh, Rosa Virginiana and bayberry. Okay. And where, where is this exactly? I didn't see the... The Crescent Neck Road. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. And I, and I believe if this Gordon Peabody from Safe Harbor, I believe that uh, Doug had gone out there. We staked the area, you know, simply one stake in each of three areas. It's a very small project, but it's important to communicate uh, with the conservation office. So you're not taking anything out? You're no, putting, no. You're putting in uh, stabilizing vegetation, is that correct? That's correct. And do it, does everybody on the commission know or agree that those are the right mix? Benjamin, do you have any input on that? Um, did, did you mention uh, American beach grass as well, or? Uh, normally I would, however, <clears throat> um, as you may or may not know, we work almost exclusively with American beach grass on uh, uh, coastal habitat restoration, but American beach grass likes one thing, that's moving sand. We don't have moving sand here. We don't have a dynamic um, erosion situation and it would be fairly passive. So uh, it doesn't mean that the grass might not have a role to play here, but we believe that the role would be fairly minimus. And when we looked around, we did not see an overabundance of uh, uh, American beach grass on this particular location. And I believe, you know, it sends out the surface runners and if they get buried by moving sand, the grass will prosper. I didn't witness a lot of that right here. So this doesn't seem to exhibit the dynamism that we often uh, um, encounter on uh, some of these more dynamic site coastal sites. Does anyone else have any questions? All right, do I hear a motion? When we I move up? that we accept this proposal. Second. Barbara, second. Right. Thank you, Barbara. Okay, Barbara, how do you vote? Yes. Benjamin? Yes. Mike? I have to recuse the Conservation Trust as a neighbor across the street. Okay. John? Yes. And Leon, yes. So I think that's a go. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to see you, Gordon. Okay, so that, is that the, all the jurisdictional opinions, Hillary? That's all, that's all the jurisdictional opinions I have for you this week. Is there any mail? Has any mail showed up for us? No, nothing of excitement. Um, we're processing the administrative record again for 1440 Chequesset Neck Road, so we're working closely um, with the attorneys on that because uh, I'm sure you all assumed that our order of conditions <laughs> the denial has been appealed um so that's that's in the queue um other than that i don't think you've had any specific mail okay nothing from bj's or <laughs> well it would be nice no <laughs> <laughs> okay um christine on meeting minutes what do you have for us um let me run quickly to my calendar while she's doing that, do we want to talk about possibly beginning to meet in person? Um, I talked to Charlie today. The problem we're having is I think that town buildings are going to remain closed and at least through Labor Day. Um, 
All of that obviously is subject to change. We're waiting on further guidance um, from the legislature, letting us know if we can continue to meet remotely or not. So um, I guess I'm feeling like it's gonna get a little bit dicey because we're never gonna know who's vaccinated or not vaccinated. And a lot hinges on the honesty and integrity of people that will be coming in to see us. Um, Town hall basement doesn't have good ventilation. Um, I don't even know if we can open a window down there. So I have some concerns about our meeting space. Um, so I just, I, I think, I just want you all to be thinking about it and know that it's fluid and we may be ordered back in person. Um, I'm just not sure it's town hall basement's the best place for us. But I think that most of us agree with that. Uh, right. There's we were talking this morning about the possibility of COA. Uh, yeah, okay. And, uh, and possibly even the library meeting. So I know right? the library's not gonna open up their, meet. sorry, my video is off, not intentionally, but um, the, oh. C there you go. the COA, um, the COA is a possibility. I haven't um, talked to Suzanne yet about it. I know the library, Jennifer is already understaffed um, and she has said she's not going to open up her meeting room for a while. So without the town hall basement, without the library, COA seems to be our only spot. The meeting room in the fire department basement doesn't have good ventilation either. Um, so I I'm sort of still trying to wrap my mind around the latest word from the governor because I don't know how we go from like everything to nothing overnight yep. when we're seeing vaccine breakthrough and I know that we're probably none of us are going to die or end up in the hospital but I'm struggling to make the jump from COVID to COVID being like flu but I'm trying my hardest because another awkward transition John <laughs> yeah I mean I, I suspect there'll be a lot of resistance to it but if we're meeting in person can we require proof of vaccination for people then coming in the meeting room? No, we can't. Nope, we can't require proof of vaccination, but we can require masking. Can, you're as a Hil can, Hillary, as a health person, why can we not require proof of vaccination? Because some folks that can't get the vaccine have a medical condition, and so we can't discriminate based on that. Hillary, <laughs> Could we meet in person and have the applicants be through Zoom? So we're, yes, we're waiting to hear the specifics um, from the legislature on what we are allowed and not allowed to do. So there were, there's been some emergency meetings that they're holding to try and figure this out because our approval only goes to the end of the state of emergency and that's June 15th. And as you know, we start advertising hearings for June 2nd you know, that's already been advertised. So we need answers <clears throat> like yesterday so we can find a way to make this work. So unfortunately I don't have the answers today, but I just want us to start wrapping our mind around it um, and we'll see where we go. Yeah, the one thing I'd like to say is that uh, I just looked at my calendar on the 16th, I won't be here and I may make it to the next meeting but I'll be flying in late at night the night before, but I'll, I, I should be able to be at the uh, meeting of the, I guess it'd be the 30th. Okay, so no no Leon on the 16th. I'm just gonna write that down because we gotta keep track of these things. Yeah. And, and we also might wanna make sure we have a quorum in case Mike Michael has to recuse because of the yeah. trust, then we won't have a quorum. So we might not be able to schedule certain things. Correct. We'll be meeting on um, June 2nd and 16th and our next meeting is not until July 7th. Ah, yeah. oh, good. Ah. So we'll just keep, keep a lookout for that. We're still looking for new members. Um, we have one person interested and we're, you know, working on that. So okay. if anybody knows anybody, you know, reach out. And, and I was actually thinking of taking a sabbatical sometime this summer, like missing a few meetings. So, I mean, if, if it's not too busy, um, 
I think I could miss a few and not be kicked off. Yeah. Uh, just that we, uh, we're all sort of catching up with seeing our families and things like that. Yeah, just let me know, Barbara, well enough in advance so that we can sort of plan. Okay. I mean, and if, if it's not well enough in advance, that's fine. Just, yeah, just sparkle, I know that 16th is the only one that I'll miss. Great. And mine will probably be the second one in July and the when's the first one in August? What's that date? Uh, my calendar only goes to June 30th. <laughs> August, it, August, August 4th. August 4th. <laughs> yeah, it would be um, fourth. I pro that's probably one I would miss too. And you just email those dates, Barbara, because I don't yet have the next fiscal year calendar. <laughs> yes. Okay. I'll, I will order one on Amazon tonight, so I'm prepared. <laughs> Yeah, we should move along here. Uh, we got about seven more minutes before we have to open the hearings. Um, we have a lot of people here. I don't know if anybody had business to talk about with us or if they're all here for hearings. So maybe a quick run through the audience to see if anybody has anything. Okay, so we have Mr. Ricketts. Are you here for a hearing? Uh, yeah. Uh, Ms. No. No, I'm not. I'm just watching. Oh, okay. <laughs> Keep an eye on us. <laughs> yes. Hi, John. Okay. <laughs> okay, great. Good to have you here. And uh, Ms. Rialt? Rialt? Yes. Yeah. Hi, uh, Dale and David. We are here for a hearing. Okay, great. That'll be sometime after five. Yes. Uh, loud and clams. <laughs> We're here you? for the uh, first item on your hearing agenda. Okay. okay. All right. Wolf. Yes. All right. And Ann Udowitz. I thought you were. Uh, are you just here to listen or? Just to listen. Bob Perry should be joining us. So okay. Bob had requested a continuance, Anne, to our next meeting, the first meeting in June for your property. I was not aware of that. Sorry, I was visiting my mother. Um, That's okay. June 2nd is your hearing date. Wow. Okay, but you had it on the list for today's agenda. Yes, right. we received a letter from Bob to at a request to continue it. Okay, so June 2nd, Hillary, that was at five o'clock, is it? Yep, please. Yep. Okay, I appreciate that update. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, bye-bye. So Christine, can we move along to the minutes? Yes, um, April 21st and mm -hmm. 5th. I think, and I saw those as they went by and they looked good to me. I think Barbara and Mike had a shot at those, right? Correct. Yes. So uh, somebody want to make a motion to accept those? Anybody? I'll make um, a motion. I move that we accept, can we do them both at the same time or? or... I think so. Or we can can we do both at the same time? Seems like Hillary's gone. Well, how about I just do the first one? I, I oh, have to be done separately. Yeah, I, okay. I move that we approve the meeting, the meeting minutes from what was the date, uh, Chris, the first one? 421. 421. Okay. Second, Michael. All right, we'll have a vote. Barbara? Yes. Benjamin? Yes. Mike? Yes. Don? I wasn't here, so I recused. Okay, and I say yes. So those are accepted. What's the next one, Christine? May 5th. I move that we um, approve the minute, meeting minutes for May 5th. Second, uh, Michael. I'll second. Well, got a crowd for seconds there. All right, Barbara, how do you vote? Yes. Benjamin? Yes. Mike? Yes. John? Yes. And Leon, yes. Okay, so that business is taken care of. Great. And thank you for all the people that are editing and cleaning those up. That's great. Uh, there was an item on the agenda for vessel mooring on ponds. Was that you, uh, Barbara? No. I don't, well, I, I didn't put it on. Hillary? No. Vessel mooring on the pond. No, we did have a, um, 
a vessel mooring on ponds. No, I'm not sure what that is. I think that um, you were going to talk to the harbor master about that. Yes, and I thought I reported at our last meeting that he and I um, committed to looking at all of the floats on the ponds this winter because um, we didn't have enough time up until now. So we want to get out there, see what's out there, and then talk about a plan going forward. So that'll be a winter project. Okay, it's just that in the winter, a lot of people move, take them out. So you right. want, might we'll not... You might not see them. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. We're going to look at them this summer, get photos of them. Okay. And then plan in the winter, talk about them and plan in the winter. Okay. That's good. Uh, is there anything else we'd like to talk about in the last two minutes of the meeting, of the business meeting? So I'll entertain a motion to adjourn the business meeting. So move, Michael. Second, Second, Barbara. Okay, Barbara, how do you vote? Yes. Benjamin? Yes. Mike? Yes. John? Is that a yes, John? You're muted. Yes. Okay. And Leon, yes. So the business meeting is now adjourned. And I think we can go right into the public hearings. We are a little early, but not by much. Seconds, that's pretty close. So pursuant to Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 30A, Paragraphs 18 through 25 is amended by the Chapter 28 of the Acts of 2009, the Wetlands Protection Act, and the Wellfleet Environmental Protection Bylaw of July 1986 and its regulations of January 2000. The Wellfleet Conservation Commission will hold public hearings on Wednesday, May 19th, 2021 at 5 p.m. with a business meeting starting at 4 p.m. via remote meeting. Pursuant to Gover Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law and the governor's orders imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place, no in-person attendance of the members of, of the public will be permitted at this meeting. Town hall is closed to the public and the board members will participate in the meeting remotely as we are doing now. In attendance on the commission, we have Barbara Brennesel, Benjamin Fairbank, Mike Fisher, John Cumbler, and Leon Shreve. So we have a quorum. Uh, the first hearing is for Wolf, 156 Pleasant Point Road, map 35, parcel 110. It's an RDA. Is there anyone to represent that? Uh, yes, this is Gordon Peabody from Safe Harbor. Okay, Gordon, would you like to speak to this? Yes, am I being heard clearly? Yes, you are. Okay, always pleasant. Uh, good afternoon. This is Gordon Peabody from Safe Harbor. This is a uh, started out as kind of a housekeeping thing where the property owners were worried about some pine branches. Pine needles are so inefficient that any threat of shade and they they die. So all pines have a uh, uh, quite a breadbasket of uh, dead branches underneath, and these. Uh, Three pines are quite close to the house and the owners have been concerned for a while. And uh, as long as they're removing the dead branches, we didn't feel that that was an issue. But since it is within jurisdiction, we wanted to bring that to the commission. Well, then it came up, well, listen, can we get rid of these locusts over here? And locusts are invasives. We don't really like locusts. And uh, we kind of vacillated between getting rid of three and four. And then they were saying, well, what can we put in? And they said, we'd like to have the area a little more open. I said, well, why don't you uh, put in a truckload of uh, beach plums, you know, uh, you know, uh, 30 beach plums, 10 beach plums per tree. Uh, and a lot of times when you get rid of invasives, you don't have to put anything in. But I really like conservation of biomass. Take something out, put something in. So <clears throat> then we got to the... Uh, meat of what apparently had been disturbing them for five years and it's poison ivy. Now, respecting the commission's lengthy agenda tonight, poison ivy is a worthy adversary. Uh, as we all know, it produces an oil that identifies our skin cells as invasives and our own immune system starts digesting our skin cells and it's, it, it's ugly. So no one really likes poison ivy. At one point, we tried to protect the poison ivy and kind of the berries, but we may have moved on. So 
I believe in alternatives analysis. The first answer that you come up with may not be the best one. And I originally told the people, we'll just go ahead and cut it and you can put some uh, kosher salt and uh, essence of orange and a little dish detergent on the uh, root. And then when it comes back, you can cut it and redo that three times because when you make a cut, you stimulate the growth hormone. So they didn't feel that that was gonna be <clears throat> a panacea because they seemed to have a lot of it. So then I recommended goats. Goats find the sweet taste of poison ivy to be the best thing in the world. So um, we made attempts to get goats in there. Uh, to make a long story short, that didn't work out as well as I wanted it to. Uh, nobody's giving away goats these days uh, to take out poison ivy. There's issues of, you know, maybe the goats running off, da, 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 fencing an area. And so then we said, okay, well, let's take a look at uh, physical removal. Um, and they wanted to, um, and I don't mean any of this in a pejorative way towards the client, believe me. Um, I was open with them and we want to look at everything just go in there with a small excavator and just clear that whole surface area out. And I'm going, well, that's kind of the rootstock and the seed bank of the habitat here. I don't think that's a good idea either. So then they uh, decided to contact a uh, arborist. <clears throat> There's a lot of professional tree people and we all know that they're all licensed to use um, a variety of herbicides. We, however, Safe Harbor, uh, don't believe in chemicals uh, of any kind. So I didn't want to disagree with the owners, but I said, well, we'll put that forward. Um, and I believe we've done that in our um, application for a Garlon 3A um, for the uh, poison ivy. And there are other environmental professionals. I know Wilkinson Environmental uses it. Um, however, in further discussions with the property owner, they felt a little pushback from me and they said, well, we've got an agreement with the landscapers that they would just rip everything out. I kind of like that. That's labor intensive. People are going to become exposed, but um, I'm kind of chemical free. So the only thing that's up in the air right now is are we taking out three or four locusts? Um, and I'm realizing that it may be my bad that I should have put in that they wanted to take out four. Uh, we certainly could get an extra 10 beach plums, why not? And um, but I, then the, the secondary, the subset issue is really dealing with poison ivy. Um, I'd be interested in hearing the commission's uh, response to the various alternatives that I presented. So the arborist was going suggesting that they just get people in there to pull the the uh, poison ivy up, or were they going to use what were they going to do? Well, they <clears throat> they preferred to use a cut and wipe, and as I mentioned, we don't do that. And as a backup, uh, they agreed with the property owner that uh, they would consider going in there and just uh, doing the ripping up. Um, realizing that the secondary backup alternative was just plowing off the, uh, you know, the rhizosphere, the upper, mm -hmm. uh, the overburden, which isn't anything that I want to be involved in. So we're up against property owners that, are, that, you know, quite frankly, have been tortured by this. We want to find a solution. If the solution is manpower heavy, then so be it. Um, but I'm interested in what the commission's history is in approving uh, um, the cut and white for poison ivy. And what did you find there? I mean, no, I, I was, I'm actually. Oh, you asking, wonder what we feel about it? I'm asking uh, uh, the chair uh, what the commission history is. Well, the chair's only been here a year, so he doesn't know. Barbara, do you have any, uh, or Mike? <clears throat> I think John Cumbler was about to say. Oh, I'm sorry, John. That yeah, was... I mean, I, I was just going to say, poison ivy is a shallow rooted plant, um, and the soil there is fairly loose. It is labor intensive to pull it out, but it is, it's you, I, I think it's the easiest, not in terms of labor, but 
in terms of impact on the environment. To get rid of poison ivy is just to put in the labor to pull it all out uh, and then to just watch it and pull out any that you miss. Um, worst comes to worst, you can put black tarp over it and the sun will burn it out. But um, I prefer a non, uh, I, I prefer either hand pulling it out or some black tarp alternative. I do not like the idea, especially this close to the coastal bank of any kind of pesticides. I don't in general like the idea of pesticides. Um, I've dealt with poison ivy. We've all dealt with poison ivy. It's a mess, but you know, cover yourself up and grab, get some gloves and get to it. You can get rid of it. Yes. So what is being proposed here is to take out, uh, trim some pines to take out up to four uh, black locusts, black locust trees, and do a manual removal of the of the uh, poison ivy. Is that right, Gordon? That's what I would like to see. As a crumb of good news, I just got a text message. <clears throat> thank God for our digital age. Um, got a, a text message from property owners saying they would be willing to um, to look at alternatives from chemicals to go go for the physical uh, route. Um, they just right. really want to get it done. And basically, right. I told them you can't do anything there without the commission review. And um, yeah, we well, can only we can only vote on a specific plan, not a all right. Maybe this or maybe that. So where are we going to go with this? Well, I think we can put on uh, conditions that the poison ivy removal be done by hand, not by pesticide. And that if they're taking out four black locusts, then there should be 40 beech plums rather than 30. Right. So that would be yeah. number four on page one of uh, our request to determination. Form dated John? April 28th. Go ahead, John. Yeah, we went out there. Um, I don't have any problem at all with adding the fourth locust. I do think people in Wellfleet are way too nervous about uh, locust trees, but these people are clearly not trying to clear out the bank for uh, for view. They're leaving right. ponds, they're leaving trees there. Um, and, and I think <clears throat> Gordon has provided a lot of, of uh, plantings to go. So even though I'd rather see trees for trees, in this case, I, I, I like this proposal. Okay, Thank would you. you like to make a formal? Uh, Actually, I meant that we accept this. Wait, I, wanna, I, I just wanted to add something really quick too. Really quick. Um, yeah, Can we talk uh, as well? As, as a butter, uh, we'd like a we, moment. Yeah. All right, all right. Okay. Yes, I'm sorry, I didn't ask for that. But. That's all right. all right. Benjamin, why don't you go first? Okay, um, yeah, and uh, so the, just to add on to the um, conditions that to also not use the herbicide for the black locusts either. Um, and actually, uh, if you, whoever is taking the trees down, which I guess is that, that's Bartlett tree expert. Um, and if if they if they just use the chainsaw and cut like two scars like a crisscross at the stump, um, that's actually a pretty effective way to prevent a black lo locust from resprouting because it it kind of kills the stump. Hmm. So yeah, we also uh, bore holes and put kosher salt in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that's good. Yeah. Okay, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Loudon Clams. <laughs> Hi. Uh, my name is Margaret Rosemary Loudon, and I am trustee of the property abutting um, this um, application. And we have no objection to the application per se. Um, I do know that there is a lot of poison ivy on my property right adjacent to this removal. And so I think it will be difficult um, to maintain um, that 
lack of poison ivy because the birds and everything else will uh, take effect. But if that property owner wants to do that, that's fine. The locusts do provide a, because they're in the pea family, a certain amount of um, undergrowth uh, for property. And that is very close to the coastal bank, as you well know. And on the other side, we have the community well. And so I'm very pleased to hear you do not want to use chemicals because I agree totally with that. And I am glad to hear that this is a um, not for a view purpose. And my husband just wants to say one thing on that. I'll turn it over to Jay Loudon, my husband. Yeah, I'm speaking as trustee's agent in this matter, of course. And um, I was concerned that, um, especially with the opening remarks by uh, uh, Mr. Peabody of Safe Harbor, that the client uh, conveyed to him that uh, they wanted to open up the area a little bit in, in addition to uh, managing some of the vegetative uh, invasives, et cetera. And um, that raises the question to me is unfortunately an ex, um, zoning enforcement conservation officer, but in Connecticut, but uh, well aware that open spaces sometimes become a little more sacred than one initially thinks. And uh, we do eventually have some plans that might move our, request your permission and approval to move our uh, small cottage, which is uh, right on the street, as some of you may know. We might wanna move it a tiny bit because we're considering a new septic system, which will necessarily be an AI. And um, I wanna be assured that this proposal is not for the purpose of creating, creating an expanded view uh, from their property, uh, which if we were to move our house even a little bit uh, might become objectionable uh, because it would would have uh, in effect uh, diminished some of the expanded view that they uh, they the, the uh, applicants had expect anticipated to get. So I'm not sure. I, I heard one of the commissioners say uh, that he is assured that this is not a project designed to expand the view, and that that is very reassuring to us. Uh, but I would like it understood that our approval of this um, uh, is, is subject and uh, expected to be upon the notion that um, anything that we might do in a very minor way, I don't think we would move our house more than about 10 feet, would not be objected to as well uh, because it might have affected the expanded view created by the loss of the locusts and the under. To be frank, we can't we can't make a decision based on any of that, but we understand the position. Uh, and I think that John, uh, I don't want to speak for John if he'd like to pipe up, but we observed that taking out the the uh, locusts would not would not necessarily open up the view. It mm -hmm. could a, a danger to the house. Uh, Mr. Chair, can I respond briefly? Part uh, yes, Gordon. Um, the Gordon Peabody from Safe Harbor. Uh, first, this is not Connecticut. This is Massachusetts. We have our own sets of invasive uh, species. Um, and black locusts is aliopathic. The roots definitely control vegetation that is beneath them. And we're trying to keep native vegetation there because that can help our native mam mammals, native rodents, native birds and insects to transition carbohydrates from uh, into protein, which is the core of habitat function. So uh, by putting, you know, the term opening it up, meaning that we wanted to have the understory available for something else, we weren't just going to, you know, turn it into a parking lot or something that uh, the idea being that we have a conservation of biomass policy that we use at Safe Harbor. And if you're removing one type of vegetation, then you're going to put in another. And I think this is um, fairly, uh, a fairly robust uh, replanting uh, plan here. And the owners are fully in support of it. So uh, again, we're not 
uh, I have not been made aware uh, that they have any interest at all in uh, seeing the neighbors, you know, in terms of a view. So that hadn't come up in your discussions with them? No, they never. Didn't. Okay. That's about the best we can do, Mr. and Mrs. Loudon. But... Yes, and I thank you for uh, making those observations. And um, we will be happy to submit a letter of support uh, with those parameters uh, expressed. And uh, we thank the commission uh, for the opportunity to present our perspective and our observations to you. Okay, thank you very much. You're Does welcome. Any questions? Um, yes, John? I propose that we accept this proposal with the condition that the uh, poison ivy management be done manually. A non technical way. Second, Barbara. Okay, Hillary? I just want to make sure I have the conditions right. Um, poison mm -hmm. ivy to be removed by hand. 40 beach plums are be to be replanted instead of 30 beach plums, and no herbicide is to be used on the property. I think that sums it up. Okay, great. Go and ahead. And they're, they're allowed to have four black locusts down, not three, which was in the original. Right, right. right. Yes. Okay. Would someone tell me if that's a negative two or three? It's in the buffer zone. So. Three. Sorry. Okay. Okay. And who okay, second? So I had a motion and I had a second. We'll have a. Does anybody want to change that? Or we'll take a vote. Okay, if you're Barbara. looking for a second, I'll I'll second it, Chris. Okay. Thank you. Barbara. Thank you, Barbara. Yes. Benjamin. Yes. Mike. Yes. John. Yes. Yeah, and Leon. Yes. What so, form is this? Form two. Two. Determine of determination of applicability. All right. This Gordon Peabody from Safe Harbor. I'd like to thank the commissioners for their hard work in these uh, trying times and also for their support of this project. Thank you. Thank you, Gordon. And I appreciate your uh, care for the environment. Yes. Okay. So we have uh, Mr. Wade for we, Wade. Hello. Hello there. Uh, how I'm, I'm sure I'm, Somewhere in there, I'm mispronouncing your name. How do you pronounce your name, sir? Way. Way. Okay, good. Uh, we've seen you before. You have. <laughs> so, would you like to discuss your uh, your proposal? Sure. Uh, <clears throat> we uh, have a um, a driveway which is now um, uh, you know uh, stone covered, and uh, due to some prior work that we. Uh, had to uh, rectify. I now have a supply of cobblestones, which I would like to use to line the driveway um, on the, uh, and I provided some diagrams and a picture, a couple pictures, I think. Um, <clears throat> on the left, as you face the house from uh, Hiawatha, there are stones uh, lining the left side of the highway and that's uh, of the driveway. And those are, uh, I'll call them boulders or large rocks. So, you know, natural rocks. On the right side of the driveway, um, there actually are a few rocks in the garden area that was uh, part of the prior discussion. Um, I'd like to use the cobblestones to, um, in, a, in a single row, to line the uh, remaining part of the driveway up to the house. Okay, and this is within the 50 foot? This is it is. Culture. It is, which and I'm, which is why I'm yep. in front of you folks. Yep. Um, so the concern would be is that we're cutting down or directing drainage at, in this critical area. So uh, will there be spaces between the stones enough for any water that so that the water could run through it? Do you think, or are you looking at this as a kind of a watertight wall of rocks? Um, I don't believe it's watertight, but I can double check. I'm using uh, Froggy Fraser as a contractor, but I can double check. Okay. That's not my intent. Okay. Yeah, we, we want to make sure that we're clear on that. 
Barbara, do you have anything to say about this? You usually do about buffer zones. Yeah, I don't think that we like any kind of hardening in the buffer zone. We like everything to be uh, pervious, generally. Mm -hmm. OK. Are there particular conditions? And I certainly understand the statement. Are there any conditions? I mean, this is it's a single row of cobblestones, which presumably have spaces in between them. So I don't know if that satisfies the condition of, um, uh, you know, allowing the water to pass through. So on one side, you have a gravel driveway that can drain. And on the other side, you have, I take it you have, that's where you're, you used to have a parking area over there, right? To the right. The parking area is still there. And there are, that is covered with the uh, three quarter inch uh, uh, natural stone, which Again, we discussed last year uh, and was approved. So um, the, the idea is to line that, that parking area and the, you know, probably, uh, it's on the diagram, I don't know the exact linear footage of the uh, driveway that leads up to the area where the uh, garage and the outdoor shower are with a single row of cobblestones. <clears throat> But unfortunately, it is within the 50, the 50 foot buffer for the filters of the filter area. And I'm not really that fluent on it. Is it just, Barbara, is it the, is it that the, where the uh, cobblestones would be is not allowing anything underneath it to drain? And it might also be directing water? Is that? The main issue? I'm, I'm not sure. It's just that the hardening itself is disturbance. Um, it, it also has to do with drainage. I'm not sure about this arrangement of cobblestones, what, what it will do. Can I weigh in for a second? Yeah. I, I actually think it's probably not detrimental. The driveway is already in place. It's more of a landscaping feature along the edge. Um, more for demarcation than any type of structural or drainage alteration. Um, we can have Mr. Way place the cobblestones in the already existing driveway on the edge so he's not widening the area um, and disturbing any additional ground. But truly, the water's going to drain in between the cobblestones. It's no different, really, than the driveway. How do you feel about that, Mr. Way? If we make it a condition that you take the four inches out of your driveway to put your stones instead of just retrenching. That that actually is my intent. Oh, okay. Anyway, I was not planning to expand it. So uh, I'm, I'm more than happy to comply with that. Okay. So what we're coming to is that there would be no increase in uh, disturbed area by this. And that Correct. The, the drainage would be maintained the way it is now probably little effect. Does anyone else have anything they'd like to say about this? Would anybody like to make a motion? John. Yeah, I, I think if these cobblestones uh, act to discourage people from going out of the driveway, um, that's all to better from our point of view. So this is a project that I would support. Yeah. It, it, if the, the conditions that we just left. If the gravel started migrating, it would just be disturbing more area. Right, so. All right, so you're making a motion to approve? Yes, with Do the I condition have... that it be, that cobblestones be within the existing driveways. Right, is there a second for that? Is that Ben saying yes? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ben. Barbara, how do you vote? Um, okay, yes. Benjamin? Yes. Mike? I have to recuse because the trust is a, a butter. OK. And John? Yes. And Leon, yes. If, if you keep it within the existing disturbance, I'm fine with it. OK. Thank you very much. I appreciate the, uh, Sir, the help. Thank you for coming to us this time. Uh, you've, learned your, you've learned the way of the ropes. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm certainly going to do this as Follow and follow procedure. Absolutely. Thank you. Well, thank you. Um, what form is this? 
Same as before, form two. And um, it's in the buffer zone, Chris. So it's three, negative three, right? Thank you. I voted for that for the reason I said is that it didn't seem like it was really going to, since it's already disturbed, it wouldn't be making much of a difference. But that's why, but I was asking the questions about what might drainage and things like that. So thank you. All right, let me get back to, let me stir my office with a stick here until I come up with the uh, agenda for the day. Awesome. What's next? Anybody know? National Seashore has been put off. Yes, we need to, it's been submitted to uh, withdraw. So we have to vote. We have to vote to, or make a motion to accept the withdrawal and move on. So would somebody like to- uh, so I read the letter from the applicant. Did we open the hearing properly? Pardon me? Did we properly oh. open the hearing? Okay, so yes, let me, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> There we go, I got it, I found it, okay. okay. <laughs> we are now looking at the item for Freeman of, for Cape Cod National Seashore, Priscilla Road and Cliff Road, map 24, parcel 83. And that was an NOI for an emergency roadway to connect the two roads for safe passenger. Um, but they have now requested to withdraw that, withdraw the existing notice of intent. Without prejudice. Without prejudice, does that mean that they can come back to us? Yes, exactly. Okay. So I take it that they weren't quite ready or they didn't really know if they needed it or? No, the issue was that the road was going on National Seashore land and the National Seashore did not give their approval for it. So oh, they, have, they have a little bit of work to do to get to that point. Okay. So what we need to do, uh, what I'd like to entertain is a motion to, to, uh, withdraw this from consideration, is that right? Would Without you? prejudice. Um, Without prejudice. So, so moved, Barbara. Second. Michael. All, second. All right, uh, Barbara, how do you vote? Yes. Benjamin? Yes. Mike? Yes. Uh, John? Yes. And Leon, yes. So that one's off the agenda. Maybe what we'll form? Do we have a what? form for that? Nope, it's just withdrawn, so no form. Okay. No form. Okay, we're getting there. All right, so the next item for consideration is, and I apologize if I'm butchering this name, Ralt? Ralt. 735 Chequesset Neck Road, map 19, parcel 112. Uh, looks like you want, okay. What? Who's here to speak about that? We have Dave Bennett here, and I believe the rows are still present. Okay. Yes, great. we're here. And Good Dave. afternoon. Uh, my name is Dave Bennett, and um, Dale and uh, David are on the phone with us. The applicants. Uh, we are um, we are before you again uh, on the same project that we were previously. Uh, that was approved under SEO 77151. Um, at that time, we were the 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 rows were building a minor addition uh, for a new entrance uh, to the front of the building and doing some interior renovations. Um, the uh, the rebuilding of the decking and the rebuilding of the retaining wall. Uh, not adequately framed in that application. And in speaking with Hillary, um, she had suggested that we file another amended uh, notice of intent, uh, a whole new notice of intent for this work. So what we have in front of you is basically work that is necessary to complete the um, project uh, and to match the uh, decking and retaining wall at the front of this property with the new entrance. So there's a nominal increase in some square footage of decking. Uh, some decking is being widened uh, and the retaining wall is being straightened uh, at various levels. There's 65 feet of retaining wall and then there's a 
hundred and square, uh, 140 square foot section of a decking that's going to be removed and replaced with a, a footstone, uh, I mean, um, a stone pathway with some restorative planting in there. And uh, there is mitigation and restorative planting on a two to one here. Um, there are, this house is Chiquesset Neck Road. And I think most of you are familiar with the area if you had not been there uh, for the staking. The house sits very close to the street on the top of a coastal bank um, that's fortified by a uh, stone revetment or a stone, re a stone wall. Um, this project, uh, there are components of the project that uh, are within the 50 foot setback of the coastal bank. Um, that is the front decking and retaining wall uh, is the shortest distance is 47 feet. It's on the other side of the house um, than the, the coastal bank along the roadway and a 53 foot variance is requested. The rear decking, they have some decking now. They just merely want to replace it in the same footprint that it's in now and put some uh, hardwood, uh, re you know, resurface it with hardwood decking. Um, that the closest amount of that decking, which is existing, is 23 feet, uh, 23.7 from the top of the coastal bank, which is the top of the wall, and um, a 76.3 foot variance is requested. The rear decking also sits within a 100 foot buffer zone for the Wellfleet Harbor, the mean high force, mean high water against the wall. It's 77.5 feet minimum and there's a 22.5 foot variance requested. Um, I, there is some, as I said, there's a planting plan that's shown on the plan. There's about 500 square feet of restorative planting that's provided at a two to one mitigation to the area of disturbance uh, uh, or increase. And the, um, there is a small, oak tree and a maybe a 12 inch diameter pine tree that's going to sit right at the edge of the wall that we would like to remove that's that's in the area of the restorative planting and I I can share some photographs but they were flagged at um, by flagging at the site uh, if you saw them when you were there so the the wall is going to be rebuilt is at the front of the house by the by the road is that correct that is correct, Mr. Chairman. And the additional square footage of deck is on outside of the 50, right? Above, it's above your retaining wall. Is that correct? Am I reading? Uh, no, the deck is between the retaining wall and the house. That's right. Yes. The closest point is 47 feet um, mm -hmm. to the top of the coastal bank. Mm -hmm. But I think Leon was asking the new decking that's being proposed is outside of the 50 or is it? Yes. Yeah, it, it would be the, exp the the deck narrowed in the former configuration. So right. that would be at least more than three feet away from that. Right. Um, yeah. I'm the supervisor for the project and I, I have no objection. I think it's fine. Um, the only thing, when I went back to look at the original plans, the rear deck is not on the approved original plan. So when I saw that you wanted to replace the decking, and I looked at my plan, there was no deck there. So I just wanted well, that, to that, that out. <laughs> Barb, that's a very good point. Uh, and it was an oversight in our uh, point. I, I asked Dale, I, I went out there several times, and then I asked Dale uh, to send me some pictures and uh, to confirm that the uh, decking had been there. And unfortunately, our surveyor had not shown that in the base plan, but that was there and uh, that has been revised in, in the, or, uh, that is shown in the revised plan. Right, and that decking is not gonna be expanded. It's just replaced, being replaced, right? Yes. Leon, can I ask a question? Certainly, Mike. So uh, I noticed that in the front near the new, uh, so where the old entrance was, there's a air uh, air conditioner or a heat pump. Is that also not on the plan? 
between the house and the road? Yes. Uh, over on the east side of where the old entrance used to be, on the east side of the of the entryway, the deck entryway. Uh, I'm not sure if that's something new. No, that that's, that. This is Dale. Hello. Um, we are planning to remove that, to relocate that. Okay. And where will it be? Where will it go? It will be um, on the east side of the property by the garage. Okay, so that should probably be on the plan then. Yeah, that would be, it would be good to up, update the, uh, the plan. I don't so think we should hold this up. I agree with Barbara uh, that I think. No, I, if they're going to move, they're going to do work on their HVAC system. If it's within the, well, we should be informed about it, so it amounts to. Uh, but I, that's not in the scope of this particular item, correct? Is that right? I do not show the the unit that's there, and I'm not a I'm, I'm happy. But that's not what we're, that's not what we're considering right now, right? Oh. We're only considering the deck, the decks, and the steel. well. The, the look, the entire house is within. There's no place on the property that you can get outside the hundred foot buffer. In fact, that mostly in the fifty foot buffer, and you see that from the plan. So, uh, you know, I I. I would suggest that I make the revision and that it be a condition of uh, conditioned in your consideration of uh, approving this project. No, that seems reasonable. That's, that's yeah. fine. fine. Does anyone else on the commission have anything to say or anybody else that's attending? Do I hear, I'll entertain a motion. Uh, this is Barbara, I move that we approve the project um, at um, 735 Chukesic Road. Second. With, John with the condition that uh, the an accurate plan right. be submitted. Yes. Accurate plan. Uh, I... plan. All right. I have a motion and a second. Barbara, how do you vote? Yes. Benjamin? Yes. Mike? Yes. Hey. And John? Yes. And Leon, yes. So you're good to go. Thank you very much. Through the chair, um, for the minutes, um, an accurate plan, I think, is an unfair statement. Uh, I yeah. think the air conditioning unit can be added. Yeah. Yes, that's that was my intent. Yeah. OK. Sorry, yeah. I have it as a revised plan to be submitted. Yeah. Yes, no, I, I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to make a big deal about it. I just, I. Mm -hmm. Defend the, the integrity of the work. No, no. Well, Sounds good. Sounds thank like thank you very good. much. Hillary, thank what you. form is this? This is form five, five order of conditions. Yes, correct. Yeah. Jeez, we got all kinds of flavors today. <laughs> <sighs> I gotta get a bigger desk. That did have a uh, through the chair, that did have a uh, assignment. Um, through the DEP uh, for uh, 77, oh, 1580, they kept the same, yeah, 1580. All right. All right, thank you very much. Have a good evening. Good luck to you, thank you. Thanks everybody, thank you. Night. Good night. Good night. Okay, now I will once again, oh. Okay, so I think we have Gyps. I see Amy Gyps. That's uh, 25 Crest Avenue, map 35, parcel 88. Is there someone here to speak to that? Uh, Steve, who was that? Steve Phillips here. There he okay, is. Okay, Steve. Yeah, Ge Geiger Phillips. And uh, we uh, uh, are here representing the, uh, the owner. So, could you, could you describe the project and the extent of it, please? Yes, we um, uh, are proposing a uh, uh, construction of a wood boardwalk uh, from the existing uh, deck 
on the water side, um, down the uh, coastal uh, uh, bank uh, to the uh, beach on Blackfish Creek. And uh, uh, it's a rather circuitous path. It was a, the bank is rather steep as we several of us found out this morning. Do away with the on grade path that the owners and the previous owners were using. And uh, at the same time, uh, at the bottom of the uh, bank, uh, uh, build a small uh, rack for the kayaks uh, above uh, or beyond the uh, rack line, above the high tide line. And um, uh, as I said in our uh, uh, project narrative, all the uh, work will be done by hand, hand dug, uh, pressure treated, uh, lumber, per the Conservation Commission's uh, requirement of 18 inches clear above the structure, uh, below the structure and um, open risers, uh, space decking, uh, uh, all of the uh, typical requirements. Uh, and then um, Vista pruning. Uh, and uh, uh, I know I took uh, Mike up on the main deck and we looked in and could see where it had been pruned in the past. And we'd like to uh, uh, reestablish that. It's, it's growing up and we now have uh, new owners for this uh, property. And uh, so, questions? Yeah, I don't see as part of your plan or the plan uh, where the vista pruning would happen and what's your replanting plan? It's on the, uh, the limit of vista pruning is on the smaller uh, plot map. I, I did uh, provide uh, photos uh, showing the uh, degree of vista pruning, a photograph that was uh, uh, annotated and a uh, small plan of the existing house with the uh, limits of uh, vista pruning from the main deck of uh, uh, 137 degrees. Uh, which uh, I pointed out to uh, uh, Mike this morning. Mm -hmm. Leon, can I ask a question? Yes, please. So uh, the idea of having a proposed walkway and stairs instead of that rough path, I think is, is fine with me. Uh, the total of the proposed walk is 394 square feet, which brings the total disturbed area on the property to over 3,222. Mm. Uh, there's no provision for mitigation in your proposal. And in the past, we have said that if you go over the, what is nominally the statutory 3,000, then you should at least mitigate for the excess. So planting of native species covering about 222 square feet uh, would probably help stabilize the bank and would not impinge on the vista. Yeah, especially the area where you, where the, I, I guess you can't because where the trail goes now, it goes onto another uh, property owner, uh, another piece of property. So we can't- well, we can really no, I, I, I was just, I, I wanted to uh, uh, agree to that as a, if that, if that is in fact a condition and obviously the planting uh, of a uh, native species, maybe the uh, uh, bayberry, um, uh, beach plum, uh, especially uh, on the, um, uh, to stabilize the existing uh, path. Uh, mm -hmm on their property. And if, um, if the butter is uh, you know, amiable to it, we, we would consider uh, uh, continuing that planning down across their property. And if not, then we could certainly uh, um, add it to uh, wherever we think that uh, places need stabilized, bare sand or anything, yeah. Do you think that that would require irrigation 
there is already some irrigation in place uh, yeah. that was um, uh, conditioned earlier uh, mm -hmm. when the property changed hands. Uh, I don't know if you noticed there was, there was a lot of the, uh, 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 the, the, the brown drip laced all over that bank. Good. So we can expect a high rate of survival of, of the uh, common Oh, yes. Tub. Well, if we... Um, I, I, I just want to um, find out, when we were there, we didn't look at the, the Vista um, okay. aspect of it at all. I know Michael did and we should have, but I, I didn't have the paperwork in front of me. Um, so I'm wondering how is that Vista pruning? You're not cutting trees, you're just thinning them or taking branches or how is we're, that? We're, to we're topping some to, to the level that it was done before. And um, it, it was very uh, obvious standing up there on the deck, uh, what level was done. Basically uh, it's, um, limited to uh, less than 20% of total height as per your requirements. And um, this, uh, the, the level was uh, somewhere between the deck, the upper level deck level and the uh, uh, railing level, which was, uh, I believe the um, Latanzis had done that. Uh, that, was, that was well before the Gips purchased the property, which was just a year ago. I'm wondering if some kind of filtered pruning can be done instead of just topping trees. Michael, did you note how many trees needed to be topped when you were looking there? Uh, well, there was a, an array of trees, but they all seem to have done very well with the, the topping before. And looking at the uh, Latanzi minutes from December, 2019, it was uh, asked for and it was approved so that they there wasn't uh, unallowed uh, right. topping. So I think that that was that was all right. Uh, they were also uh, yes that they the Latanzis were supposed to build a kayak rack or remove the kayaks from the shore. Um, and Cumbler asked why the oaks would be removed, and they explained that the locusts had to be uh, taken down first. So it, it looks like everything went along properly last time. And they're just asking to repeat that trimming process. And looking at the photos, it doesn't look like that's, it's too severe. There's, there's plenty of trees with, with, uh, a lot of foliage on them. And you said that the, the level is somewhere between the deck and the hand railing that you want to yep. go across? Correct. Uh -huh. I can't quite get that angle out of this. It's not a 3D picture. So. <laughs> uh, okay, so we have three things, it sounds like. We have the boardwalk and, walk and stairs, the uh, kayak, and the uh, Vista uh, trimming, topping. Is that right? Is that some of that? That's it. Okay. I've never been involved with one of the, with putting the stairs down there. I, what? Well, we do know that you need to uh, mark the stairs in case they do wash away, which is unlikely, but in this place, I suppose. But generally, if we have a structure like that that goes down to the beach that we have um, imprinted on it somehow uh, the, the name and the address of the house, some identifying feature, right? Is that right, Hillary? Yeah, we can go with map and parcel easier. It's a little less of a branding. It can be map and parcel. Name isn't so good because properties transfer hands. So yeah, map and right, that makes a lot of sense, map and parcel. Um, is the bot the bottom of the stairs is going to be permanent? Kept there all winter. I was going to make it permanent. It's 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 well above the uh, uh, rack line, high tide line. Okay, no, I'm I was just asking. Sometimes mm -hmm. people remove the bottom section. This is in a pretty sheltered area, though. Right? Yeah, it's not a velocity zone. So. <laughs> 
the, the velocity is us slipping down the trail, I think. <laughs> that was it. Um, does anyone have any statements or questions? Um, let me just review the conditions before we go ahead and take a vote. Um, Michael, I needed from you the exact square footage of native plantings we wanted. 200 and... Well, it, if we had 222, okay. that would mean the the total yeah. disturbed area would still would be right. compensated for. Yep, yep. That, that's what I wanted. So uh, mitigate with 222 square feet of native plantings on the locust property. A planting plan is to be submitted and the stairs are to be marked with map and parcel. And yes, and that's even though it doesn't clearly show it, the boat rack will be in that little uh, swale that's off off of the beach, right? So correct, minimal impact, but that's part of the plan, so that doesn't need to be a condition. Then you can go ahead and vote. Well, I have to have a motion first. So I would move, Michael. I would move that we approve Gibbs Twenty Five Crest Avenue Map Thirty Five parcel 88 NOI with the conditions that we just said. Second, well. Barbara. Okay, Barbara, how do you vote? Yes. Benjamin? Yes. Mike? Yes. And John? Yes. And Leon, yes. So that's it, it's good to go. We need a supervisor and that's form five. Five and a supervisor. I'll supervise it, Michael. Okay, Michael, thank you. Excellent. Very good. Well, thank you, Commission. Yep. Have a good Thanks. evening. Okay. Have a good evening. Okay. So we have two continuances that we need to vote on, correct, Hillary? Yes. Okay, I think we do. Yeah. Um, All right, so uh, are we going to, let's take these one at a time. Unowitz, are we just going to continue that to the next meeting? The June 2nd. And same with Beringer, Beringer? Well, Beringer, I'm thinking we might want to continue indefinitely because we have a quorum issue because Michael has to recuse. And so that means he needs all four of you to vote in favor of his project um, or it's gonna get denied. So I feel like we should wait for another member so he has some chance, you know. What's he doing that we wouldn't approve it? <laughs> well- I thought, we, I thought we were primarily waiting for the uh, uh, the heritage thing. I guess what I'm saying is I wouldn't want to put my yeah. project before you for the chance that one commissioner might vote against it and it's going to go south. So I'd rather hedge my bets and wait till there's another commissioner. Um, okay. uh, I, I mean, like I said to Bob, I said he can come, he can come before us at any time. It, it you know, yeah. makes no difference to me. I would just hate to see the project get denied, you know, right. because because we need everyone to vote in favor of. And this is something that he would be doing next winter, right? Probably. Well, I mean, yes, yes, he's not going to do it. He can't do yes, it. Uh, and it is, it's a highly sensitive area. So, yeah. okay. Could I hear a motion to uh, continue Udowitz to the next meeting? So move, John Cumbler. Second, okay. Barbara. All right. So we'll have a vote. Barbara? Yes. Benjamin? Yes. Mike? I have to recuse because the trust is no butter. Okay, John? Yes. And Leon, yes. So that one is continued. What form? Then Darren, uh, what, form is that? what form is that one? I don't think that there is no a form. form. No, no form. form? Okay. No form, no form. All no right. Form. And Behringer, uh, I'd like to hear a motion to continue that indefinitely. So I'll move to continue it indefinitely. Okay, is there a second? Second, Barbara. Okay, we're, <laughs> we're getting down low on people, so everybody has to kick in in a second. All right, so we'll have a vote. Barbara? Yes. Benjamin? Yes. Mike? Recuse, because it's on trust property. Okay, uh, John? Yes. And Leon, yes. So 
if I'm not mistaken, unless somebody else has another issue they'd like to speak, I think this is the end of the meeting. Does anybody else have anything? Hillary, got anything? Doesn't sound like. I don't have anything in particular. I'm thinking maybe um, June 2nd on the business meeting, we'll get the wastewater co committee to come and talk about their Warren articles. Um, I think I, we're gonna see John Cumbler, just so you know. Oh, you're on both committees, so maybe you know. Seems like it's more palatable today to put the enhanced IA system and warrant article back onto the warrant. So um, that would be exciting to have money available for folks to upgrade to the enhanced IAs. So I'm hopeful that makes it on there, but um, Kurt, and Scott and whoever else from the wastewater committee that's available could come and present them to us so you can hear them in greater detail. So and when are we going to hear Horsley Witten or is that just going to be a that's special meeting? Oh, right, right. I, um, I got to print that out for you. And I think I told them June 2nd as well. Wasn't there uh, something where he was only available certain days? Uh, I'm looking back to see in my email if he got back to me about that date. Um, <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> don't mind the sneezing. <laughs> uh, let's see. Got to get to D here. All right, let me see what he said. Because I. All right, Nick Kelly. Hi, uh, Hillary Fordnet. You know, I don't see that I heard back from him, but I'm just going to check my book here and see if I penned him in. And I did not. So I don't think I've heard back yet. So do we want to try for June 2nd or do we want to try for June 16? Is this going to require another work session? I believe it will. I mean, we can, and that's, I guess that's the alternative. We can pick a totally different day and time, and maybe that's the better option to meet with them so that we're not pressed for time. I think we could do it before the 16th. That way I could attend too. Okay, so why don't I, um, I'll do a doodle poll with him and Jeff Davis and you guys and see if we can come to some agreement on a particular date and time. Okay. okay. And then, um, copies of those two yep. will yep. be available before that okay perfect hillary yes on a uh, reference to the previous conversation about the wastewater committee yes. and i know you've got an awful lot of stuff on your plate but if you have a moment if you could call andrew gottlieb at apc yeah. and have yeah. a conversation with him about because I'm not that pleased about where we're going with this based on yeah. conversations I've had with Andrew. Yeah, and, and so here's the thing, right? Um, nothing that they're proposing is hurtful or harmful to the environment, right? Um, the question is, is whether there's a better alternative that might be slightly more costly, or maybe it's not slightly more costly, that would better serve the town of Wellfleet. And the thing is, we have to roll all of these options out to the town. And um, I think, John, I know where you come from. And I think there are others like you that think a sewer is a better option um, or a wastewater treatment plant. And um, let, let me just qualify for the high flow area, A, yeah. and B, yeah. It's, a, yeah. it's, a, it's a plan, it's a tertiary plan. Yes. So, it's drinkable water coming out, not. Yes. That's important. And, and so I think we have to have those conversations in the community because it can't just be a group of five people that are going to decide the wholesale wastewater treatment plan for the for the town of Wellfleet. It, it requires public input and public buy in and the public to communicate about what the best option is. So. Um, I think these are all options in in sort of our our window of things to choose from, and um, nothing has been set in stone. But I think it is 
good to to move forward with something. I mean, 95 Lawrence Road is is a win win for everybody. Um, so that's the other article that's being placed. I don't think any of the other I, ways again. There's some question about whether 95 Lawrence Road will get the 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 sewering of that or the the waste dealing with that waste will will get the funding it assumes it will get. That's one of the concerns. You mean through the funding through through the warrant or the funding through grant programs or the funding through grants through the, through the state through the state. Yeah. Uh, um there are a couple of different avenues that we will look. Um, it might not come from the SRF. There's a map. There's a couple of other grants we could pursue for that. So um, I would hate to throw that one out um, because I think it provides good wastewater benefit and housing. So I think that that's a good one. Um, and just getting back to the enhanced IA, I think that's useful because the more data we have on these systems, um, the more realistically we can evaluate them. But that all being said, I'm happy to reach out to my friend Andrew and chat with him. It's, it's been a while, so I'm due, I'm due for a talk. Okay, thank you. Of course. And Mashpee just got, deserves congratulations, right? Because they just passed it. Yes, yes, it's been a long time coming. Anybody, Barbara, did you want to say something? No, I'm good. Okay. Uh... It's after six, Nikki's big hands past the 12. So I move that we uh, adjourn. Do I hear a second? Second, John Carney. Barbara, how do you vote? Do you want sure. to? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Okay, Ben? Yes. Mike? Yes. And abstain. John? Yes. And Leon, yes, I think we're done. Good, Good job, yeah. Leon. Thank yeah. you. Very Great good. Job. Yeah. <laughs> right. that you're just buttering me up so i'll continue doing this for a while. absolutely <laughs> a great job. i really truly do we threw you into it and you've been wonderful so no absolutely kudos to you oh, absolutely you. yes and thank you all for attending and dealing with business okay see y'all later bye bye